Okay, everyone. So we had a little bit of a hiccup there. That's okay. That's all right. We're we're gonna roll with it. We're gonna start back up again. Um, so not sure how much you heard, but we're gonna go through and uh, quickly do a brief intro again. So hello, everyone. My name is Shreen Abdullah. I'm the founder of Yumlish, which is a company that uses cultural nutrition therapy to support those with type two diabetes. So my question to you was. Have you heard of positive food language? And if you have, drop it in the chat and tell us what, what positive food language is. And if you don't know what positive food language is, that is quite all right. Drop that in the chat to tell us what you think maybe kind of what a shoulda positive food language is. Um, so we will address your responses in just a second. But our nutrition par education partners today are our Houston Food Bank, and so we've got Maggie, we've got Hannah. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Hannah. Um, who are going to be making for us a refreshing quinoa bowl here today. The recipe is available for all of you. Cook along with us if you have your ingredients and you plan on cooking with us. Please do bring your ingredients out of your pantry. Bring your ingredients out of your mm -hmm. fridge. Let's cook. Let's get cooking together. And please make sure to tag us. Um, if you are cooking along with us, if you have other thoughts, you've got something on your mind, you want to ask us a question, drop it in the chat. And if you do, please tag us. We are at, um, we're going to be hashtag Yemlish Live and then hashtag HFB Live. All right. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Hannah. Hannah, tell us about yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Hannah. I'm a nutrition educator here at the Houston Food Bank, and my role is to provide nutrition education to the community of Houston through classes such as this. And I also have Maggie here with me today. She is a health promotion specialist at the Houston Food Bank, and her role is to promote the health and wellness of the community through classes and wellness programs. And we're just really excited to be here today. We have an exciting and fun and healthy recipe demo for you guys. That's lovely. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks, Maggie. All right, so with that introduction, I have to ask you now. So we got a couple of responses in. We got, um, let's see, mailing says, it is positive food language is talking about food in a positive way. So Hannah, tell us what positive food language is. Yeah, that is a great guess. So positive food language is just a way of talking about food that kind of reduces that guilt and shame that's associated when we categorize foods into good or bad. So essentially food has no moral value. Food is not inherently good or bad. Food is just food. And we all need to eat food in order to fuel our bodies. So positive food language really reduces that categorization of good into bad. And it really just focuses on the other aspects of food, such as the taste or the flavor of the food or the reason for eating that food, such as celebrating an accomplishment or celebrating a special time. Lovely. So I can share some slides on positive food language here. Would you like me to do that now, Hannah? Yes, that would be perfect. I have it up, go for it. All right, awesome. Okay, I'll share a little bit more about positive food language. So why is it important to use it? Well, it's really important that we try to use positive food language because changing our language around food really is just going to ultimately help promote and support a healthy relationship with our food. and also helps us feel better about our food choices. The way we speak to ourselves can really affect our mental and emotional health. So by using positive food language and speaking kindly to ourselves, we can practice self-compassion and grace towards ourselves and lessen that anxiety and any guilt, shame, or embarrassment that can come with talking negatively about ourselves when it comes to our food choices. So what are some examples of this? Well, a few, a few tips that we can input into our daily lives is one, try to avoid commenting on other people's food choices. And that's just because you really never know what someone's going through behind the scenes, what struggles they may be having on their body image or their food choices, or even what health concerns they may have. So it's best to just avoid commenting at all because you really never know 
how your comment can affect someone. You know, words are powerful and some people take things and you never know how it's going to affect them. So it's better to just avoid it completely. Another tip is to use different words. So when we describe our foods, we can try using words such as delicious, satisfying, energizing, nourishing, nutritious. These are all great words that can really highlight the positive aspects of our food instead of calling them bad or unhealthy. So those are some easy switches as well. And I'll go ahead and go through some examples, which you can see on the screen right now. So um, one, the first food rule, it says, I can only have cake on special occasions. I have the slide here as well. And this is with a food rule. So what, how can we change that? How can we rephrase that to be more aligned with positive food language? Well, we can say restricting foods only makes us crave them more. So have your cake and enjoy this. And I love this because it's so true. Whenever you restrict yourself, you're really only making yourself crave it more. You know, it's like when you tell yourself you can't have this or whenever you're a kid and your parents told you you couldn't do this, it just makes you want to do it more. So that can really lead to a dangerous cycle of restricting and binging. And we want to avoid that. So instead, if you're having a craving, satisfy that craving and enjoy it while you're eating it. So the second example is emotional eating means I've lost control. So this is a popular one too, it's really common. And how we can rephrase that for a more positive food language mindset is saying, we need to eat whether we are happy, sad, excited, or nervous. And this is so true because we think about it, no matter how you're feeling that day, no matter what you're going through, if you're feeling down or overwhelmed, you still have to eat. You still need to fuel your body and get that energy. So it doesn't matter if you're feeling sad and you're eating, it's okay because we need, to, we need that energy for our bodies. And that's it. Thanks, Shereen. Yes, yeah, sure thing. Thank you. That was that was very insightful. All right, so we're starting to see some comments come in. Thank you very much for that, um, for telling us about positive uh, food language, Hannah. So we're starting oh. to see some comments come in. I'm just gonna, um, so folks saying, love Houston Food Bank and Hamlish. Um, people, <laughs> Some people really happy that you just give them permission to eat cake. <laughs> so some folks excited about that. All right. So with that, let's move on. So again, just a quick reminder, make sure to send us a photo of your meal, your, you know, whatever you're doing in your kitchen, you're cooking along with us, or you're lounging on your couch. That's all right too. Just make sure to use hashtags Yumlish Live and HFB, Houston Food Bank Live. Um, and send us your pictures, send us, you know, drop comments in the chat, interact with us. This is a session for you, for the community. So please interact with us, tell us your thoughts, tell us what you think about the cooking demonstration that's coming up next. Um, all right, so with that, we will dive right in and we will go to um, Maggie. Maggie, you ready? Get in there. Hi, so let's do a quick sound check. Can you hear me okay, Maggie? Yep, perfectly. We have okay. to do that okay. yeah. just, microphone, just, but I can hear perfect. you. Perfect, just speak up a little bit, Maggie, so we can hear you better. All righty. Yep. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the YouTube Food Bank. We're at Keegan's Kitchen right now. Um, and so today we'll be preparing a tasty quinoa recipe. Um, it incorporates a lot of vegetables, it incorporates some protein, and it incorporates some quinoa, which I know some people are not so familiar with, so I'm excited to show you a little bit more about this wonderful grain. Um, so, our, actually, our recipe can be found on our website if you later want to cook it at home and use it for your meal planning. It's perfect for that. But I will go ahead and go over the ingredients, which are listed here which are shown here on my table. So, Maggie, we're, we're still not here. still not able to hear you too clearly. Um, maybe just speak up just a little bit more or try the other headset or both headsets maybe. Okay. Let's see if this works oh, better. better. Yes, ma'am. Much, much, much better. Go for it. Perfect. All right. So the very first ingredient we have is quinoa, which is a grain. It's actually a whole grain. So it looks like this. 
it looks like a seed. Um, it's very easy to prepare. You just boil it in some water, some chicken stock or some vegetable stock to give it a little flavor. Uh, today we're actually just going to be using some water, very basic. Um, and this grain is actually perfect because it's very high in fiber, which helps keep that gut healthy. And it also provides some sort of protein. So it's a great resource for those, those friends who are vegans or vegetarians and are not wanting to eat meat. A quinoa is a great source of protein. We also have some canned beans right here. Make sure to always choose some low sodium canned goods. If that's not an option, then you can buy the regular canned goods and just rinse them under some cold water to get rid of that excess sodium. We also have some canned um, corn. We were using yellow corn right here. These have already been rinsed and drained, so they're good to go. I have some fresh cilantro right here that we chopped um, a little while ago as we were preparing for this awesome live segment. We have some lime wedges. These are great to provide that extra tasty flavor without adding more salt um, to your recipes. We have some white onion. You can obviously use some yellow onion, even purple onion, if that's what you have in your pantry. Now my favorite ingredient, some diced frozen mango. It's been thawed out by now, uh, but we did buy it frozen as it's not in season right now. However, you're preparing this in the summer, you might find it fresh, which is even better. We have some diced red tomato right here. Again, a great source of fiber and rich nutrients. We have some shredded lettuce that we'll use once we prepare our bowl. And we have some grilled chicken right here. Uh, you can prepare your grilled chicken however you'd like. I just use some olive oil, salt, pepper. You can use other spices that you have in your pantry or that are your favorite to give it a little more flavor. We are keeping this diabetes friendly and low sodium. So that's the reason we decided not to add a lot of salt to all of these ingredients. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some water for the quinoa. So I have my skillet right here. It's been warming up this whole time, so it's getting nice and toasty. And we're going to add the quinoa. So with the quinoa, you can add as much as you'd like. Right now, I'm not cooking for a lot of people. It's just Hannah and I here tonight. Um, so we don't need a lot. You can always also make it more soupy. So if you want something that's very warming for these winter nights, then you can make it into a soup just by adding more water or more chicken stock or vegetable stock, whichever you're using. I'm going to add some more. And the quinoa won't take a long time to cook. You'll see that within the next five to seven minutes, it's going to be ready for us to use. So we're just going to leave it right here. At this point, you can also add more spices if you'd like. So I have some cumin right here. I'm just going to add a tiny bit since it's very strong. It's a very potent spice. I have just a tiny bit of salt. I'm not going to use all of it. I'm probably just going to use a pinch. And we have some black pepper, some grounded black pepper. So again, I'm just going to add a pinch. And I apologize for the background noise. This is what happens here at the food bank. We have all sorts of noises and machines and it's normal for us, but I apologize if you hear anything in the background. All right, what do you think, Shireen? How's it looking? Is it pretty easy? There you go. It is looking good. So 
we have a question that came in. Um, so a question that says, uh, so Charmaine says, does quinoa have a lot of protein? Yeah, so quinoa does have a lot of protein. Um, so like I said earlier, it's a great source for those people that are wanting to increase their protein intake without eating uh, meat. So it's a great alternative. Um, so yeah, yes it is. It's very, it's a great source of protein. Okay, great. All right. All right. So while we're waiting for the quinoa to cook, we're actually going to prepare some pico de gallo that we're going to use as a topping for our quinoa bowls. So I'm just going to move my quinoa to the side. I'm going to make some room for all of the nice veggies we're using for the pico de gallo. So I have my bowl here. And so with the pico de gallo, I'm sure you guys are familiar. It's very easy to make. We're gonna be using all of the ingredients I listed earlier. Um, so we're gonna start off with the fresh diced tomato. We actually diced about two tomatoes. So it's not a lot, but again, it's just for us two right now. So if you're cooking for more people, then you might need a little more tomato. We're gonna add the onion. And this is completely customizable to your likes. I know a lot of people are not big fans of onions, so you don't have to add as much as I did. I'm gonna give it a mix. We're gonna add cilantro. And so cilantro is really nice because it also gives it some extra flavor. And you can use this as a garnish at the end as well, which is what we're going to do. So right now, I'm just going to add a little bit. And it's looking like this. Going to mix it up. We also have some jalapenos, which I think I forgot to mention earlier. But um, to give it a little bit of spiciness, we're going to add a jalapeno. We're not big fans of spicy food here, so we're not gonna add a lot. We're gonna keep it friendly, so just a little bit to give it a little bit of flavor. And again, if you don't have jalapenos, then you can use some serrano peppers or any pepper of your choice. Let me tell you, Maggie, if I was making it, that entire bowl of peppers would have gone right in. <laughs> oh yes, I know. I understand that too. I like spicy foods too, but we want to keep it friendly for everybody here at the okay. food bank since we're going to be giving some samples. So we don't want to make it too spicy. Well, Charmaine is asking, will you be giving out samples at the end? So I don't know how we'll be giving out virtual samples, but... <laughs> yeah, I wish I could give some virtual samples. That's something that Maybe we need to look into for this 2021 year, giving out <laughs> some virtual samples. But if, if you're here at the food bank, come on down to Keegan's Kitchen and we'll give you a sample. All right. And now the next ingredient is the mango. So I found this in the frozen fruits section of my local grocery store. Um, it's very easy to find. They have big bags and little bags, so you can use as much as you'd like. It's looking so colorful, which is a good sign because that just means there's a lot of healthy nutrients that we need for our bodies to be energized and ready to take on the day. It's looking like this. We're going to squeeze some fresh lime juice. And we're going to add a little bit of salt. And some black pepper, just a tiny bit. And we're going to mix it up. And that's pretty much it for the pico de gallo. And we're going to be using this as a topping once we start building our bowls. So at this point, you can taste it to see if it needs maybe more mango to give it that little zesty flavor. But I trust that it's tasting really good at this point. So I'm going to put it off to the side. 
and we're going to wait for it. We're going to wait for the quinoa to finish cooking. Awesome. We had, uh, so Michelle, Michelle Fisher says, I like adding avocado to my pico. Yes, that's also a great ingredient to add in. Um, so that's actually something that I would have added in too. Um, it gives it that nice soft texture that the mango is giving it right now to our recipe. Mm -hmm. All right, so the quinoa is coming along. We're gonna add our corn. So again, I'm using some low sodium corn. Um, those are always the best options whenever you're using some canned goods. We always wanna try to reduce our sodium intake as much as possible. And so is the idea, Maggie, that we want to, for a boil to come in, how long does it normally take to cook? Yeah, so eventually it is going to come to a boil. Uh, most of the liquid is going to get either evaporized or absorbed by the quinoa. And so the quinoa is going to expand just a tiny bit. It's going to open up so it's no longer that hard seed that we started with. All right, so we have a question from Charmaine. She says, wait, is the quinoa done? And so she's asking, uh, do we drain the water? No, the quinoa is not done yet. It's gonna take maybe about two to three more minutes for it to finish cooking. But you can certainly drain the water if you want it to be more dry. So this is kind of like rice. Um, it all depends on how tender you want it. Um, so this is, it's very similar to rice. I would say it's like a cousin to rice. They're both grains. Um, it's just that this is a whole grain as maybe you would use with brown rice. Brown rice is also a whole grain. Um, and this just has a lot more fiber and it has a lot more protein compared to rice. So you cook it pretty the same way, you know, you just add some water. Um, just so it boils up a little bit and softens up. So I don't know if you're able to tell, but most of the quinoa is uh, getting a little bit softer and opening up. So it should be ready in a few more minutes. Okay. Sounds good. And I'll just, I'll take a second here to tell folks that if you are cooking along with us, if you are uh, watching this and you have thoughts, drop it in the chat. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what you think about quinoa. Have you cooked it before? Is it one of those things that you just go order at restaurants but don't cook yourself? That's okay too. Tell us your thoughts on quinoa uh, on the pico that we've made so far. It looks good. It looks colorful. That's what I like about the pico. It, it's nice and colorful. So getting some nutrients in there. Um, and so from there, if you are cooking along with us, uh, please use hashtags H fb houston food bank so hfb live and hashtag yumlish y-u-m-l-i-s-h so use hashtag yumlish live and hfb live if you are cooking along with us and again if you have questions drop it right in the chat we want to take this minute by the time our quinoa comes together we want to take a minute answer any questions that you may have uh, so drop it in the chat for us uh, Amin says, mango is my favorite. I would also add avocado. So <laughs> a lot of avocado <laughs> here today. Yes, please do. And I think some of them are on sale at local grocery stores right now. So I'm always a fan of using things that I find on sale or in my pantry, especially when I'm wanting to meal plan. All right, so as you may see now, most of the liquid has been consumed. So the quinoa is coming along just great. So while we wait for that to finish, I'm going to start building a bowl for myself. And then we'll switch it over to Hannah so she can prepare her own bowl, just so we can show you how we customize our portions and our likes for this bowl, because that's what 
you know, life is all about us. Hannah mentioned earlier, we want to listen to our bodies and what we like and uh, just make sure that we enjoy food. That's what food was made for, to enjoy it and fuel our bodies. All right. Well, I'm going to start off with some beans. And so again, I'm using uh, the low sodium black beans. Um, if you don't have this option, you're more than welcome to use some pinto beans. Um, you can even boil some yourself. If you're using some dry beans, you can put those to boil. I know it's going to take just a little bit longer, but you know, you got to work with what you have in your pantry. I'm going to add some beans to my bowl. And so again, beans are a great source of protein and fiber. So this bowl is going to be protein packed. And so I'm just going to read you out some uh, comments real quickly, Maggie. So Aries says, I love quinoa, but I've never made it at home. Definitely going to try it now. So people starting to get less scared of quinoa now. Um, Michelle says, I've had Southwestern quinoa before, but wasn't satisfied. I've never really tried it. I'm enjoying this video to learn more to how to cook it and, and, and what to put with it. So, um, Michelle had a bad experience there with quinoa. Uh, and oh, then we no. thought, I know, right? It can, you know, if it's done right, it can taste so good. Yeah, I know a lot of people are not so familiar with quinoa. I think most people are familiar with your common grains like rice, um, maybe even brown rice, but I always like to be an advocate of quinoa and I like to tell people that it's not so hard to prepare. As you see, you just pretty much boil it. Sometimes I like to boil it with some chicken stock that I have from when I boiled my chicken for other recipes. So. It's very easy to make, don't be scared of it. Um, it's very versatile, you can incorporate it into many recipes um, and you can make it your own because it doesn't have much of a flavor so you can add pretty much anything you want. I love it, All so right. we've got- uh, so I would think maybe we've got, just one uh, more minute. Uh, 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 oh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Uh, so we have Fernanda who says, I love cooking and eating quinoa. I usually add chicken broth instead of water. What do you think about that? That is awesome. Yeah, that's, that's what I like to do too. It's just that, you know, here at the food bank, we didn't cook chicken today, so we don't have chicken stock. <laughs> uh, but that's a great, great alternative. It gives it more flavor. You just got to be careful with the amount of salt you've added to your chicken broth if you're wanting to keep your sodium intake low. So maybe, Maggie, like a low sodium broth? Yep, exactly. Yeah. All right. So it looks like the quinoa is done. I'm going to turn down my heat so we don't overcook it or burn it because... That can easily happen, and it has happened to me before, but I don't want to ruin it tonight. So it's ready. And now going back to our bowls. Again, you can make your bowls however you'd like, using whatever ingredients you have. This is just something that we like to show you as a framework, so you get to see um, how you can customize the recipe based on your favorite ingredients. So. I already added my beans earlier. I'm going to go ahead and add some quinoa. You got to be careful because at this point it's going to be really hot. It's looking like this. It's already looking very colorful. We have the beans, the corn, and the quinoa. We're going to add that pico de gallo. I'm going to add a lot because I want a lot of mango. I'm going to squeeze some more lime juice onto it. And I'm going to add some of that grilled chicken. It might be easier if I do this. 
Yeah, one more piece. Can't forget that lettuce. I just thought of, an, of another awesome ingredient that I would probably add myself at home, which is cheese. So if you're a big fan of cheese like I am, I add it to pretty much everything. So I would totally add it to this too. I'm gonna add some cilantro. And that's pretty much it. As you see here, it looks very colorful. You're able to see all of the layers I added of the different ingredients. Mm -hmm. So again, if you don't want this to be as dry as it is right now, you can always make your quinoa a little bit more soupy. That way you have that moisture that you might prefer. But this is what it's looking like now. Now I'm going to pass it over to Hannah so she can prepare her bowl. All right. For those of you just joining us, a couple of new people. So if you're just joining us, Hello. Um, please make sure Please make sure to tag uh, HFB Live, tag Yumlish Live. If you've got questions, drop them in. We want to answer all your questions. We're, we're rounding up toward the end of our cooking demonstration here. So if you have questions, drop them in the chat. We want to make sure Hannah or Maggie can answer your questions about quinoa, about other substitutes you'd like to see. Um, what are you cooking tonight? Tell us what you've got going on for dinner tonight. If not this, that's okay. What do you have on your dinner plate going on today? What do you have cooking for family, friends, for yourself? All good. Um, let us know in the chat, in the comments below. All right, Hannah, take it away. All right. Hey, everyone. So I wish you guys were here and you could smell this because it smells so good. But I'm going to start with the quinoa and corn as my base. So I'm going to get a good serving of this. I love corn. It's so sweet and just tastes so good. So I got some quinoa. And I'm gonna add some pico. I also really love mango, just like Maggie. So I'm gonna get a good amount of this. And I love how colorful it looks in the bowl. And then I'm going to add some lettuce. I love adding lettuce because it adds that nice crunch. I'm gonna do this actually. So this is great also. Add some greens, add some crunch. All right. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add my beans. I love black beans, but you can really use any bean that you like. So if you like pinto, if you like red, um, whatever it is that you like, feel free. I love beans as well. So I'm going to add a generous serving of that. Then I have chicken. I'm going to add some more of this. I love this recipe because it's so packed with protein. You got protein from the chicken, from the beans, from the quinoa. So it's so, so good. It'll give you a lot of energy for sure. And then, of course, Add some lime, add that refreshing flavor right on top. So, so good. And then lastly, some cilantro as a finishing. And there you go. So this is what my bowl looks like. So Maggie can show her bowl too. Here are our finished bowls. Yeah. Thanks, Sheree. All right, colorful bowls there. Yes. All right. So um, to that cheese comment just a second ago, uh, Amin says, oh, yes, cheese in everything. So yes. and Charlene says, um, cheese is my bestie's favorite. All right. And then oh, uh, yeah. we've also got a comment from Michelle. Um, Michelle says, I love it. All these ingredients look way better than what I tasted. So <laughs> <laughs> trying to change some experiences there for folks. Yeah. All right. So, so with that, we're toward the end of our uh, of our demo here. So if you have any last second questions that you would like to ask Hannah and Maggie, you know, drop them in the chat. Let us know. Um, Hannah, Maggie, any any last thoughts from you? About meal prepping, maybe. Um, I just like to say that this recipe is great for the people that are wanting to meal prep. Maybe you dedicate your Sundays or your Monday evenings to meal prepping for the week. This is great because you're able to prepare everything ahead of time. And then maybe the morning of, you can prepare your bowl like we did. You just take out all of your little containers, add them to your bowl, pack your lunch bag, and you're good to go. I love that. 
So let us know. I mean, do you normally meal prep? Let us know in the chat in the comments. Do you normally meal prep? Any meal prep related questions? Anything about positive food language that Hannah talked about earlier? Um, I'm just going to go through the questions here. So Charmaine says, uh, can you make a wrap out of this? Oh my goodness. Yes, that's a wonderful idea. This is totally wrap friendly. <laughs> so if you have some tortillas at home, I would highly suggest some whole grain tortillas just to keep that uh, fiber intake and that um, nutrient content higher. I would suggest some uh, whole grain tortillas and just do everything like we did in the bowl. You would just add it to your tortilla, wrap it up and maybe grill it a little bit on your skillet just to warm up the tortilla a little bit. I would definitely add some cheese if it's a wrap. I would add more than enough cheese. <laughs> And that would be it. You could pack it with a side salad, maybe some fruits, some veggies with a dip, and you have your lunch ready to go. Awesome. Yeah, as a taco. Yeah, and I think uh, another question Charmaine had, uh, can we substitute rice instead of quinoa? So for the Definitely. folks still on the fence with quinoa. <laughs> yeah, I highly encourage you to try quinoa if you are going to the grocery store tonight or maybe tomorrow, I would suggest you buy a small bag of quinoa, try it out now that you know how to cook it. Um, and let us know, send us those pictures of how you prepare it. Tag us, I would love to see what you prepare. Lovely, how can we make the, re uh, the recipe vegetarian? So if you like to make it vegetarian, then we would not include the chicken. You would definitely use vegetable stock or water when preparing your quinoa. Um, you already have that great amount of protein that you need through the quinoa and through the beans. Um, you wouldn't add any cheese. If you have maybe a soy-based cheese that you prefer, you can use that. Uh, but overall, I think the recipe is very friendly for those who are wanting to follow a vegetarian diet. I love it. And so how long, so Mailing is asking, how long can we keep this? How, how long is it good for as far as uh, meal prepping is concerned? Great question. So pretty much everything I would suggest to keep no more than a week in your refrigerator. Um, the quinoa is very easy to make. Um, so you can prepare it maybe the morning of, but if you are wanting to meal prep, I would suggest no more than a week in your refrigerator. Okay, sounds good. Um, so Jehan says, thank you so much. Lots of thank yous coming in. Lots of people sort of enjoying this. Um, we'll take any last second questions still coming in. So we've got a couple more. Um, a lot of thank yous coming in. Let's see. I want to make sure I answer everyone's questions. Oh, what is, I'm sorry, it scrolled up. Um, what is the nutritional value on quinoa? Yeah, so the nutritional value, I don't have exact amounts, but you're able to see the nutrition facts label on our recipe, which is on the Houston Food Bank website. It goes into great detail. So if you're wanting those exact amounts, those are on the recipe. But again, I just know that, that it is high in protein, it's low in carbs, it's high in fiber, um, and it's packed with B vitamins. That way you have that energy to keep going throughout the day. And overall, I just love quinoa. I love promoting it and incorporating it into recipes. So if you are wanting those exact amounts, again, it's found on the recipe, which I'm sure we can find a way to send it to you, or you can just access it through uh, visiting our website. Sounds great. And I'm going to squeeze in one last question, Maggie and Hannah. Um, so Michelle is asking, could you make quinoa in the rice cooker? Ooh, I'm sure you can. I actually haven't tried it myself. Um, you I've know, tried it. it oh, works. Hannah says that she's tried it and it works. So yes. definitely try it and let us know how it comes out. <laughs> okay, sounds great. I uh, got a bunch of hearts. Thank you. This is great coming in. I think with that, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Maggie, so much for your time today for walking us through this refreshing quinoa bowl really really appreciate your time and to all of you thank you so much for joining us for for giving us company if you have any questions you can also throw it in comments later we'll always respond to questions so feel free to do that with that thank you again for joining us have a great rest of your evening 
Um, and please stay tuned for, to Yamlish for future events so that you're um, so you get notified of those. Thank you again. Bye.